everyone. Today I'm going to talk about adding beads to your knitting. So first we're going to go over choosing beads for your knitting. Then we're going to talk about the two main ways of adding beads to your knitting, either one at a time or by pre-stringing them all, and, and why you should not exchange one for the other. And then we're going to have a tutorial for the two techniques for adding beads one at a time to your knitting. And there will be chapters and timestamps down below so you can jump to whatever you need. And while this is not specific to socks, uh, I do have my latest sock pattern here called Beat It that I will be showing. But you can use these same techniques to add beads to your sweaters, your shawls, whatever you're adding beads to. Okay, so let's get started. But first, let's go over what you're going to need to add the beads to your knitting. So first you're going to need beads, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Uh, but you should get whatever size beads your pattern calls for. Next, you're going to need some small steel crochet hooks. And the size that you need depends on the beads that you're using. What they need to do is they need to be able to pass through the beads. These usually come in a set. Uh, the one that I usually end up using the most for the size beads that I use is 1.1 um, millimeter. This is a one millimeter. Uh, you might be able to go up a little bit more or you might need to go down a little bit more just depending on your beads. So it's good to get a set so you have choices. And then if you don't want to buy the small crochet hooks, the other option is to use threader floss. This is dental floss that has, uh, the end of it is kind of stiff. There's like a little piece of plastic in there that makes it a little stiff, so. And of course, you're going to need your project. Now I've knit up just a little bit of a sample so I can demonstrate this to you today. But first, let's talk about choosing the beads for your knitting. This is highly personal and it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. Uh, do you want the beads to blend in with your knitting and just give off a subtle sparkle? Or are they more a feature? Like on these socks, I would say the beads are more of a feature. You want to make sure you can see them. So you want to pick a color that will stand out against your yarn. Now, if you haven't done a whole lot of beading and you don't expect you're going to be do, uh, doing a lot of beading, you know, adding beads to your knitting, you might want to not buy, have to buy too many beads. So you may want to get some sort of neutral, like these, these are ivory pearl salon beads. Um, you could get black or silver or gold. A lot of people ask, oh, can't I just buy clear beads? and use those because clear beads will go with everything, right? Well, they're also not going to show up very much. Maybe if you're in the light, they might catch the light. But anytime you get a clear or translucent bead and then you put it on yarn, it's going to take on the color of the yarn. And even if they're not clear, um, it might be good to get a few of the beads that you're considering and then you can just string them on your yarn and then you can hold them against your yarn to see what it's going to look like. So let's let's try that. Let's get this on some yarn. You can just pull pull that through with a crochet hook. That's why you want the crochet hook. And then you could try some others. Oops. And just kind of hold that down there, pull them on. And then let's see, let's get some of these, a couple of these little pink ones on here too while we're at it. That can be helpful when you're actually beading to have a little like dish or something with a lip to put your beads in so they don't roll away from you. Okay. So just say you have a few different beads that you're gonna test out and then you put them, you can string them on some yarn and then you can hold them up against your yarn and then you can see what they're going to look like on your knitting. So if you look at this, uh, the white ones are opaque. That means you can't see through them at all. 
So they're going to show up against most of your yarn colors. So any opaque bead is going to be like that. And now you can look at these, the purple ones on this end, and the pink ones on this end. Well, the pink ones, you can see, they, they kind of blend in more. So those aren't going to show up too well on the pink yarn. And the purple ones, they show up a little bit more, but because of the finish and because of the type of bead that they are, they're going to be a little bit more like, I don't diaphanous is the only word I can think of it. Like you can see them and you can see the color, but they're not, they don't stand out as much as these opaque beads here. Now let's go over the types of finishes. So you already know you can get some beads, string them on yarn, see what they look like. Uh, but what are the different types of finishes? I already told you a little bit about opaque beads. Um, opaque beads, you're not going to be able to see the yarn through. Uh, the clear beads, so if you get translucent beads, any type of clear beads or translucent beads, they are going to take on the color of the yarn. Now, the lined beads, they're clear on the outside. They might have a finish on them on the outside, but then they're lined with the color. Like these are purple, these are pink. I have a couple other examples here. These beads are too small for knitting, but these are silver lined. And can you see how they glow? I, I don't want to take them out of the containers because they're small. Um, do you see how they glow? So silver lined beads, if you really want to up the sparkle, the silver lined beads can be nice. And then of course, um, there are matte beads, which are opaque, but then they're just flat. They don't have any sort of shine or sparkle on them. So you'll see the color on your knitting, but no sparkle. And then regular beads, uh, kind of like these white ones over here, they are opaque, uh, but they do have a little bit of a sheen on the outside. So, and there's, a, there's other finishes too, like both of these purple and pink ones have the letters AB after them. And AB stands for Aurora Borealis, or these are your iridescent beads. So the iridescent beads, you know, they're gonna shift and change color in the light. So you're definitely gonna see sparkle, but the color isn't going to be as consistent. So again, it's all, it all depends on what the look you're going for. Let's talk about the size real quick though. Okay, so these bigger beads are size six beads, which is written as six slash zero, six slash zero. I don't know if you can see that here. The smaller beads are size eight beads, with, which is written as eight slash zero. So the smaller the number, the bigger the bead, but your pattern should call for a certain size. There's tons of options out there. If you don't know, if you're overwhelmed and you don't know what brand to pick though, I can recommend uh, the Miyuki brand uh, because the beads are very nice, they're very consistent, they're high quality, I've been using them for years. As I mentioned earlier, there are two main ways to add beads to your knitting. It's going to be either one at a time or pre-stringing all the beads. And you do not want to interchange those two. You want to follow the instructions of your pattern. So most of the beaded knitting I've done, you add the beads one at a time at a specific place. And it's part of the pattern in, in that you don't want the bead to move around. So when you add the beads one at a time, they don't, they don't really move around. They don't move around. Uh, there's very little movement, even when I try, okay? So it's, and it's very stable because when you're adding the beads one at a time, they go over both legs of the stitch. When you pre-string the beads, and I don't know, I mean, I've heard of shawls where you can pre-string the beads. I've heard of a shawl that uses like 5,000 beads. I might be misremembering it, but it's a lot of beads. And when you're, so you pre-string the beads on some lace weight yarn and then you knit as normal and then whenever you need a bead, you just pull one up. But if you think about that for a minute, when you do that, that bead is only gonna be in one strand of yarn. 
So it's going to kind of flop. And if you've ever had uh, some yarn that had a knot in it, and you didn't do anything about that knot, no, and you just knit it, sometimes it comes to the right side of the fabric, and sometimes it falls to the wrong side of the fabric. And even if you put, even if you put it in one of the other of those places, sometimes it doesn't behave, and it goes back to the other side again. If you only have a bead on one strand of thread, that can happen. So if you have a beaded shawl that with hundreds or thousands of pre-strung beads, that might happen, but it might not matter because if you're adding the beads to a shawl, it might be just for sparkle and maybe not an integral part of the design. Whereas for example, on these socks, um, it's an integral part of the design. Or on a sweater, like maybe you have a beaded yoke of a sweater. Well, you, those beads are probably going to be at set intervals. So you don't want those beads moving around. So you don't want to try to um, switch those methods up. You should use whatever method your pattern says. So why don't we transition now into actually showing you how to add the beads to your knitting. And first, I'm going to show you the crochet hook method. And then I will show you the floss method. So you're probably going to be working from a chart when you're adding beads. That's what, that's what I've done in the past. Most of the beaded projects I've had had a chart. And the symbol for a bead can vary, but lots of times it's a capital B. But again, you'll just have to read your chart. So whenever you come to that symbol on your chart, um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your crochet hook that is small enough to go through a bead. You, t you get that bead on your crochet hook and then you're going to insert the crochet hook into the stitch that you're going to be placing the bead on. You insert it purlwise. You take that stitch off the needle, then you use your fingers and slide that bead onto that stitch. And then while that stitch is still in the crochet hook, you place it back on the needle. And then you put the crochet hook down. You're done with that for now. And then you knit the stitch. So normally, if it doesn't say otherwise, after you put the bead on the stitch, you're going to knit it. Now, it could be different. You might have a pattern that says purl or do something else. But if it doesn't say, then you're going to knit it. And that's it. And the process is the same for the smaller beads too. So let's just do that one more time. Let's knit to where you're going to add a bead. Grab your crochet hook. Stick it through the bead. Let's add a purple one this time. Uh, slide it into the stitch. Take the stitch off the needle. Slide the bead with your fingers onto that stitch. Use the crochet hook to replace the stitch back on the needle. You can put it down and then you knit it. And it's not done until you knit it. That knit keeps it in place. And so when you're putting that bead on the stitch, it is below this, it, it rests on the stitch below the one that you just knit. And now let's see that process with one of the smaller beads. Let's do one of the pink ones. So we place that on. Same process. And you can see I'm pulling a little bit. You want it to be tight because the, crochet, the hook on the crochet hook is very small. So you need to, to grab When you're working with the smaller beads, sometimes it takes a tiny bit more force to slide it on, but it's usually okay. Let's do one more of those. Sometimes the hook is, when the hook is very small, you might split the yarn when you're trying to pull it through one of these small size 8 beads. If that happens, basically you just have to try again. Um, now, it kind of split it, but it did pull the whole thing through right there, and then you can just put it back on. 
This depends a lot on your yarn. Like, um, it's better to use a smoother yarn when you're beading, I think. When you're using the small beads, it's just a little bit easier. If your yarn is fuzzy, it gets a little bit harder to pull through with the small beads. Okay, but now, so I like the crochet hook method. It's very easy, very fast, as you can see, and you don't have to do any prep work. But for the floss method, and this can actually help, um, I have some beads that I, um, I strung on some floss for another project and I just never took them off. So <laughs> when you're adding a lot of very small beads, like I said, sometimes the crochet hook, uh, while the bead quality of these beads is very good, the opening can be different and can be smaller in some of them. So I found if I was adding a lot of the smaller size eight beads, that it was a little bit faster to use the floss method. So, as I showed you earlier, this is just threader floss. I had to order this online. I don't usually see this in the stores. Um, but they come in packs like this, and sorry for the noise, but... So you can take it out, and there is this stiff-like plastic embedded in the end of the floss here. And it's a long piece of floss. And what you're going to do first to load the beads on the floss, you're going to use a stiff end kind of like you would a needle and just stick it through. You have to create a stopper bead before you load up all your beads on the floss. And the way to do that, just pull it through. So I pulled it through from the bottom and then I'm going to go back through the bottom. So I kind of Okay, so I pulled it back through the bottom and now uh, the floss is wrapped around the bead. And so that can be my stopper bead. And then you would just, you're just going to thread your beads on the floss. And you can thread, it depends on how many you're doing. But you're going to be pre-threading the beads on the floss and so it depends on how many you're doing. It take a little bit of time. And then you thread them on the floss, as many as you need. Now I'm going to go back to the blue beads here for a second since I already have a lot threaded. So you have all your beads threaded on the floss. Now to do this, you're going to slide one bead up. Well, you're going to slide one bead up. You're going to use um, the stiff end of the floss. You're going to poke it through stitch purlwise like we did with the crochet hook and you're gonna pull it through and now you're gonna take and you have the other bead here you're gonna take that the stiff end of the floss and you're gonna put it back through the bead so now you have the floss going back through the bead and now you can just slide the bead down the floss and onto the stitch so can you see that bead on the stitch there? And then once it's on the stitch, you can just take the floss off. And then you'll have to replace it. I probably could have replaced the stitch on the needle while it was still on the floss. That probably would have been easier. It's been a while since I've, been, since I've done it this way. So replace that back on the needle and then you knit it. Okay, so let's try that again one more time. So you just put the floss through. Okay. So you put the floss through and then you need to grab a bead up. Oops, where'd it go? There it is. And then put the floss back through the bead. Slide the bead down onto the stitch. And then yeah, while, while you still have the floss through that stitch, 
You use that to help it guide back, guide the stitch back on the needle. And I know I probably made that look harder. Um, once you get into it, it gets a lot faster. Uh, and yeah, and then if you can't find the thread or floss, you can probably use regular floss and then just like a tapestry needle. Not a big one for yarn, but a smaller tapestry needle, like maybe cross stitch size, so it'll fit through the beads. And you can probably do it that way. I've never tried, but I'm sure it would work. So that is two different ways to add the beads. And everyone has their preference. Like I said, I like using the crochet hook most of the time just because I don't have to prep the floss and deal with something else. But then again, when I was adding um, a lot of beads to a project, I like the floss method. The only uh, downside that I found with this floss after I used it for a while, um, this hard little plastic piece it started poking through the end of the floss. It, or it started poking through the middle of the floss right there and like coming out, so I had to get a new piece. So maybe if you used a needle instead of the thread or floss, that wouldn't happen. So there's the two methods of adding beads one at a time to your knitting. And you can try out both, see what you like. Everyone has their preference. Anyway, so I hope you uh, find some projects you want to bead now that you can see how easy it is.